Hi again, first grade. This is our last passage for the week, Hippo and Frog. So this is the passage for Friday. So again, if you're here just so I can read it to you, when we get to the bottom, I want you to pause it, go answer your questions, and come back and check. You've already read it, and you've done all of your answers. Stay with me, because we'll read it one more time, and then we'll go through and check your answers. Okay, so our story today, Hippo and Frog by Katie Clark. So we actually have a different author today. Hippo squishes mud between her toes. She gulps down lily pads. She blows bubbles in the water. Blub, blub, blub. Hippo loves her home in the pond. Frog watches her. He lives in the pond too. Frog said, I like you, Hippo, but I don't like mud. It is messy. Hippo said, I am sorry. I will tiptoe through the mud. I will not be messy. Frog said, I like you, Hippo, but I do not like it when you eat the lily pads. I like to hop on them. Hippo said, I am sorry. I will not eat the lily pads. You can hop on them. I will eat the grass instead. Frog said, I like you, Hippo, but I do not like bubbles in the water. It is loud when I swim. Hippo said, I am sorry. I will not blow bubbles in the water. Frog said, you are very kind, Hippo. Thank you for being my friend. So if you haven't answered questions, pause now. Go back and answer your questions and then come back and join us. All right, so we've been talking all week about those test-taking strategies that you guys are going to need as you get older and leave first grade. Um, you're going to come across things like multiple choice questions and short responses, and I want you to have a really good idea about how to attack these when you leave first grade. So remember, in multiple choice, we're going to read all of our answers and go through and cross off those options that make no sense or we know for a fact are not right. And then we're going to leave the ones that might be right open so that we can go back and figure out which one makes the most sense. So number one, where do hippo and frog live? Well, I know that they don't live in a river. Maybe they live in a lake. They might live in a pond in the woods. No, I know that they don't live in the woods because they're around water. So I'm not really sure. Is it a pond or is it a lake? A lake is a basically a bigger version of a pond. So I'm going to go back to our story and see if I can find an answer. I'm going to look for that word pond or lake. Hippo loves her home in the pond. So I know for a fact now that they live in the pond. Number two, why doesn't Frog like it when Hippo squishes her toes in the mud? Hmm, the mud gets on Frog. It makes a mess. It makes the pond smell bad. Frog wants the mud. I never read anything about it making the pond smell bad. I know that Frog doesn't want the mud. I can't remember. Does the mud get on Frog or does it make a mess? So I'm going to go back to my text and read that again. I'm going to look for this keyword mud to help me find my answer. All right, I'm looking for mud. Mud. So I'm going to read the sentence before and the sentence after. Frog said, I like you, hippo, but I don't like mud. It is messy. So there's my answer. Frog doesn't like the mud because it is messy. It doesn't get on frog. All right, number three. Frog tells Hippo that he does not like it when she eats the lily pads. What does Hippo eat instead? So I'm going to use lily pads as my key word. I'm going to go back to my story and find lily pads. So I read about mud. Oop, here's my keyword, lily pads. I'm going to read above and below. Frog said, I like you, Hippo, but I do not like it when you eat the lily pads. I like to hop on them. Hippo said, I'm sorry. I will not eat the lily pads. You can hop on them. I will eat the grass instead. So that's what Hippo said he's going to eat instead of the lily pads. Hippo eats the grass in all right number four why doesn't frog like it when hippo blows bubbles in the water 
bubbles. I'm going to use that as my keyword and go back to my text and find bubbles. So I know I read about mud. I know I read about lily pads. So nothing is in between. So I'm going to keep moving down my story because I've already read this. And I'm going to look for the word bubbles. Bubbles. So here's my keyword. I'm going to read above and below bubbles. Frog said, I like you hippo, but I do not like bubbles in the water. It is loud when I swim. Hippo said, I am sorry. I will not blow bubbles in the water. So we know that frog doesn't like bubbles because it's loud when the frog swims. Because it is loud when frog swims. Number five, why does frog say you are very kind to hippo? I'm going to use the keyword kind. Go back into my story. So I know I've read everything up here and I didn't come across anything with kind. So I'm going to keep moving down my story. Kind, kind. Oh, there's kind. I'm going to read above and below my word. Frog said, you are very kind, hippo. Thank you for being my friend. So why does frog say that hippo is kind? Well, all of this above tells us that hippo is apologizing and making it right. So she doesn't, frog doesn't like the mud because it's messy. So hippo says, I'm sorry, I will tiptoe through the mud. I will not be messy. Frog says that she doesn't want hippo to eat the lily pads because she likes to hop on them. And hippo says, oh, I'm sorry, I'll eat the grass instead. Frog said, I don't like bubbles in the water because it's loud when I swim. And hippo says, I'm sorry, I will not blow bubbles in the water. So frog says that you are very kind to hippo because hippo shows compassion to frog, right? And guys, you might have different answers than me on this one because it's not cut and dry in our text. But something about because hippo shows compassion or hippo doesn't play in the mud, hippo doesn't eat the grass or the lily pads, hippo doesn't blow bubbles. All of those things are what make hippo kind. So anything similar to that is going to work just fine. All right, let's work on some vocabulary. So these are our vocabulary words. We're gonna draw a line to the definition that matches. And remember that Miss Ackerman's lines can get a little messy and it's hard to track, so I'm gonna always write the letter next to the word. So we need to find grass, not a pool of water, thin green plants. Yes, I would agree with that. Grass is thin green plants. A pond, a pool of water. So a pool of water just means, um, it can mean a pool like you go swimming in the pool or a pool like it's pooled together or puddled together, but a pond is obviously a much bigger puddle of water. So we're going to say pond is A, bubbles, walk softly on your toes, air in the water, noisy, yep, air in the water, letter D, loud, walk softly on your toes. No, or noisy. Yep, just like in our classroom, we can get kind of noisy. Tiptoe, my last answer is to walk softly on your toes. I'm not going to immediately assume without reading that this is the right answer. You always want to go back and make sure that it makes sense because it could be that you've made a wrong choice somewhere else. So if tiptoe does not make sense with this definition, I'm going to go back and start all over. But in this case, walking softly on your toes is the definition of tiptoe. So we're good to go. All right, if you need a little bit more time on this page, pause it. But we're going to move on to our writing prompt. All right, so this is a little bit different today. So we're not doing a straight writing prompt. This is some more comprehension from our story. So it says in the web, list the three things that frog does not like hippo to do. Well, we've already written about two of those things, right? So this is the subject right here. This is what we're working on. And sometimes Miss Ackerman does this on the board. Remember, I might write something like, um, let's see, perseverance. 
and I'll do one of these and I'll draw little arrows and you guys will give me definitions like never give up or try your best. So we do this a lot in crew or in modules when we're talking about some vocabulary words that we're not quite sure of. But in this case, we're answering a question, right? Something very specific. So it says frog does not like it when hippo dot, 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 dot. So these are the reasons or the things that frog that hippo does that frog doesn't like. And we've already answered some of those questions in numbers three and four. So we know that frog doesn't like it when hippo blows bubbles in the water. We know that frog doesn't like it when hippo eats the lily pads. And we know that frog doesn't like it when hippo plays in the mud or squishes, squishes the mud. Okay. All right, first grade. So that is it for this week for our reading comprehension. I want to give a special shout out to Dylan, Liliana, and um, Nathaniel and Haley. I see you guys working on Zern and on Epic, and I'm very super, super, super proud of you guys. I want you to keep going. Guys, if you haven't gotten on to Zern or Epic, I want you to try to do that because I want to make sure that we're continuing to move through our learning. If you are having a hard time or your login isn't working or you're having some other issue, have your parents email me and let's work through it together because I want to make sure that you guys have access to those things so that you stay busy and you're doing some meaningful activities to keep you going in first grade so that even though we're not going to see each other in person for a while, you guys will still be ready to go to second grade when the time comes. I miss you guys a lot. I can't wait to see you again. I want you to stay very healthy and safe and reach out to me to say hi, reach out to me with any questions, and we'll keep you guys posted for how we're going to work um, together by being apart. So stay safe, have a great spring break, and we'll see you guys soon.